Hello, and welcome back to the Manufacturing Culture Podcast, where we dive deep into the heartbeat of the industry, bringing you the latest and greatest from the world of manufacturing. I'm your host, Jim Mayer, and before we jump into today's exhilarating episode, a quick reminder. Don't forget to check us out on our website at manufacturingculturepodcast.com. You can also connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram, and even TikTok if that's your thing, for more exciting content and updates. Let's rev up the excitement as we introduce our phenomenal guests for this episode. First up, we have Akshat Thirani, the amazing trailblazing CEO and founder of Amper Technologies. A fourth generation manufacturer with factory floor in his DNA, Akshat is not just another entrepreneur. He's a Northwestern University alumnus who's made it to the prestigious Forbes 30 under 30 list. His mission, to revolutionize how manufacturers track and improve their operations. Get ready to be electrified by his insights and passion for innovation. Joining Akshat today is the dynamic Katrina Keys, hailing from the vibrant city of Kansas City. Katrina isn't just passionate about enhancing operational efficiency, she's a visionary in transforming organizational culture. With three and a half years of intense experience in the manufacturing sector, Katrina has mastered the art of turning challenges into stepping stones for success. She lives by the philosophy of lifelong learning and believes that personal growth is a cornerstone of success. Her journey is not just about reaching the pinnacle, but about uplifting others along the way. Together, Akshat and Katrina bring a powerhouse of knowledge, experience, and enthusiasm that's bound to spark inspiration. So gear up, listeners, as we explore the innovative worlds of manufacturing, culture, and personal growth, where challenges are not just met, but embraced with open arms. Let's roll into this jer exciting journey of insight stories and much more right here on the Manufacturing Culture Podcast. Welcome to the Manufacturing Culture Podcast, Aksha and Katrina. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? Doing fantastic. Thank you so much for having us here, Jim. So excited. Yeah, thanks, Jim. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you're very welcome. It, pleasure is 100% mine. Um, you didn't have to be here. I do. So I appreciate you being here. Um, so Aksha, Katrina, both you guys gave me bios, um, but I'd love to hear what your journeys are in your own words. Katrina, just order of what I see on the screen here, we're going to start with you. Tell us how you ended up at Amper uh, working in the role that you're in today. Yeah. Um, so I've actually been um, providing solutions to um, uh, businesses, been in B2B SaaS uh, solutions for the last decade. Um, and, uh, so I've worked at a, at a few, uh, companies that provide solutions into the market. Um, previously I worked at, uh, for, with manufacturing, um, at a company called safety culture. Um, and I actually was connected with someone who worked at, uh, Amper, uh, learned about what Amper was doing. And, uh, I knew exactly before I even had a conversation with Akshat, like what Amper provided to uh, manufacturers. Uh, manufacturers are problem solvers. And so um, I very quickly was like, oh, um, I know exactly what this does for manufacturers and I can sell the shit out of this. So um, that was my first thought. Um, I love it. Again, you know, I say that phrase, but ultimately it really is. Um, I enjoy working with manufacturers because they are uh, the people who solve the most problems day in and day out. And I really like solving problems. So um, yeah, after I saw Amper as a solution, I was like, oh yeah, let me, I'll, I'll go do that. Yeah. Awesome. And, yeah. and so what, what, what brought you into the manufacturing world? I mean, uh, was there anything particular or, or what led you to that point? Um, I, so obviously from Kansas city, um, we just have a, a company here, uh, locally, it's actually an international company called safety culture. And I was kind of went to a networking event and learned about kind of tools for manufacturers. Um, and so that was really what got me into selling to manufacturers. Yeah. Um, and so then um, I had a, uh, another journey in between safety culture and Amper. Um, and so wanted to get back into uh, 
uh, providing manufacturers with a solution because I kind of missed just that kind of everyday problem solving. Um, and so, yeah, yeah like it, once I once I got in um, really working with manufacturers and realizing like, hey, they just have they're solving problems all day. That really kind of made me kind of stick to um, the manufacturing sector. I've 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 worked for you know companies that for ed tech healthcare companies, but not not necessarily all problem solvers like manufacturers. So that's a yeah. big sticking point for me. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, are you a Chiefs fan? Uh -huh. Yes, I am. Okay. Okay. Yes. I won't hold it against you. Uh, I was born and raised a lifelong Broncos fan. So mm, um, wow, we are yeah. frenemies. Right we, now. Are frenemies. we are frenemies. Yes, uh, I, yes, I am are. rooting for you uh, yeah. in this next uh, you know well, playoff you. run. So yeah, uh, for those of you listening, we're recording uh, during playoffs, uh, and yeah. this isn't going to release for a while. So you get the joy of uh, football talk in yeah. April, whenever this so is released. Today, today is Red Friday here on okay. January twenty sixth. Um, which means every Friday, the football season is Red Friday. I was wearing my Chiefs uh, Travis Kelsey jersey, as I do. And every call that I had today, everyone was like, is that a Chiefs jersey? I was like, yeah, you got it. Absolutely, it is. <laughs> it's a big weekend for us. It is. It is a big yeah. weekend. Yeah, so I've gotten razzed throughout the day. So I'm okay. I'm okay. Listen, yeah. we're a winning team. I'm not mad. Yeah, you can't be mad uh, with no. the success you guys have had lately. Uh, yeah. Akshat, uh, off to you. Uh, first, uh, has Katrina sold the shit out of uh, Amper? Um, <laughs> Absolutely, she has. Yeah, okay. she is a true problem solver. Like, it's so crazy. Like, she's on the road, like, pretty much every other week. Um, she is super hands-on and is doing everything from educating folks to... She's actually been installing devices when, when needed. So, wow. Uh, yeah, Swiss Army knife here. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Well done, Katrina. Aksha, oh let's hear your story. How'd you get to where you are? I mean, uh, fourth generation in manufacturing. Uh, tell us your story. Yeah, absolutely. So I grew up in India and my, as you mentioned, you know, my family's been in manufacturing, pretty diverse processes from, you know, sandpaper to auto components. And so very much uh, grew up immersed in the world and loved everything about how things are made. And, you know, like any other high school nerd, like I was very much into looking at those videos on how things are made and, um, you know, came to the US for my undergrad and I was studying manufacturing design engineering, but I always had this itch for computer science and, you know, what technology can do. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, was kind of torn between, I really love manufacturing, everything about it, but I absolutely love everything about technology as well and kind of building products. Yeah. And so that kind of brought a perfect kind of combination with Amper for me, which is I, uh, I still immerse in manufacturing and, um, you know, get to build a lot of great products. So that's, that's really what started the journey. I will give kind of a deeper click over here. Yeah. So the initial product for Amper was actually a home energy monitoring product that pivoted into industrial monitoring. So we can unpack that later, but uh, it was a funny kind of, pivot that uh started the business um but anyways yeah i'm here in chicago and uh super excited to be building amper i i did not expect that pivot on your product man uh of of all the things that you could have said i don't think i ever would have guessed that as as the the pivot to and from um so Tell us more about Amper itself. I mean, uh, you, you kind of alluded to uh, the it's pivoted, it's transformed over the years, right? What does it do now, and and how did it get from where it was to where it is now? Totally. Um, so, at a very high level, we help manufacturing companies go from manually tracking their operations and having a lot of silos in their data to having a complete picture on what's happening in real time. And crucially, we enable teams within factories, not just uh, you know, individual stakeholders in a silo. We're trying to bring everyone to the same page. And so some examples are trying to understand on the shop floor how many parts are being made in real time. We're trying to understand you know, when you're quoting a job where your, your gap might be. Um, you know, when a customer calls you up asking you, hey, what's this? Uh, you know, PO at P 
being able to instantly answer if you're running ahead or behind schedule. So we're trying sure. to give answers to a lot of critical information that goes into actually getting parts out of the door. Wow. Um, but kind of getting to the genesis of the product, the, the initial goal was very much to automate the way data is collected from machines. Um, and so we built this patented technology where you can con connect uh, any kind of machine and capture real-time data. And we have this technology that measures the electrical heartbeat of a machine, so the signature uh, on equipment. And using just that, we're able to tell things like downtime and so on. Um, as it's evolved, um, you know, we now connect to ERP systems, payroll software, and we crucially enable frontline folks like operators, supervisors to make better decisions day to day. And uh, yeah, get to, get to serve all kinds of folks from uh, maintenance to operations to finance and so on. So um, yeah, it's been really exciting. That's awesome. Uh, Katrina, in, in the intro, I mentioned that you're a visionary in transforming organizational culture. Um, tell us a little bit about that side of your background and then share with us, because this is a manufacturing culture podcast, how does Amper technology help transform the culture within uh, your customers? Sure. Um, so for, I mean, culture, if I really wanted to go, you know, back to kind of where I got passionate about culture was in high school. Um, I won't tell that story, but I grew up in a very, a great culture there. And so it was okay. a lot of formative um, years. Um, it was an all girls high school, but throughout kind of my young adulthood into, into my career, um, it just became very clear that uh, culture is, um, it's really a, should be a forefront um, of each business, um, not just, I mean, should be a forefront for any organization. Let me rephrase, not just a business. And so um, I actually um, kind of when I got kind of dipped my feet into culture um, in an, or, from an organizational sense, uh, actually, uh, as a young kid, my mom um, was part of the planning commission. And so I got to learn, you know, about city cultures, things of that nature. And so as an adult, I lived out in Redding, California, and we had this like cultural transformation project that I worked on with the city mm -hmm. for the city. And so um, it was literally, I mean, this is not squirrel, but it's definitely a different approach here, but um, worked with the city there and five different building owners. And I had um, over 200 people um, post their smiles up around um, on the outdoor outside of their buildings. And it was called the inside out project. And so um, we were really working inside the city of Reading um, to change kind of the culture there. Um, mm -hmm. And what would that look like? And so that's why I kind of say, you know, I'm glad that you said organizational culture, because it's not just B2B. It's not right. a business culture. It's your nonprofits. It's your city. It's every, you know, everywhere. And so um, also stepping into a number of, of different sales um, organizations, um, working with different leaders um, who, you know, uh, sales is, is really emotional intelligence. Sales is really like a, uh, if you have to have, you have to have a strong culture inside of your sales team to really, you know, face the day. You, we get told no more than we get told yes. So like I win and I lose more than I win. So it's this wild world of like, <laughs> you know, this, okay, you know, how does your culture um, support your employees? Um, and so that is, you know, your, your culture is going to allow your people to operate um, in the way that you want them to. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why, you know, culture is more of an experience than like a letter of the law per se. Um, and so how, how each person brings their, um, you know, POV or perspective um, to the business and to that, their part of the organization, whatever department they're in, um, is very vital to, um, whether a business, an organization, um, a community is successful or not. Yeah. Um, and so it's also, it, it's basically unifying, right? Like unity in diversity, if you will. So that's part of a solid culture is a lot of people have their own, you know, not everybody has their own perception or, or perspective. And so making sure that everyone's bringing together what they, what they are bringing towards the common goal. Um, and so, yeah, so 
I think there's, you know, obviously I just touched on a lot of things that I've been a part of in regards to culture. But when I think those things, though, touch on how Amper um, helps cultures is okay. like Akshat mentioned is like we're working with uh, maintenance. We're working with production. We're working with um, man, uh, manufacturing. Um, and so it's it's really like bringing everyone together towards the common goal of uh, like an aerospace manufacturer, what's the goal for that business? Mm -hmm. um, getting everybody on the same page, but of course, each department is is has to do their own thing and achieve their own goal to make um, the overall goal happen. And so, when we're talking culture um, and like implementing a, a solution like Amper to change culture, it's really like, okay, where are we at today? Yeah. Right. Like, where are we? What do we have to do to change? This is what is actual reality of of where we're, we're at and how to get to the goal. And so um, I think, you know, as we touch multiple departments across um, a business, um, everybody, number one, being on the same page is really big for culture. So then there's, what does that do? When you're on the same page, it remo removes confusion. Mm -hmm. um, it removes, it removes a lot of things. Uh, frustration, because if you're yeah. on the same page, you know where you're going, you know, um, hopefully how to get there as well with essentially the data that you're given. Um, and so, yeah, I think um, culture, I would say uh, from a manufacturing perspective, just from, from what I've been learning, particularly working with the customers that we work at, work with at Amper, um, is having, having the right information at the right time to make the right decision um, is very key to having a really good positive culture. Um, and that's where I think Amper kind of comes in for culture change there is awesome. now your man, your, your, your uh, maintenance is not asking your operations or they're not saying, no, so-and-so said the machine was down for this long or so-and-so said it was down for this long. No, we all actually come together and look at Amper and say, this is actually what's happening. And so, um, yeah, I think it's a vital culture shift. It's an automatic, really. Like if you're implementing Amper, you're implementing culture change. That's awesome. I love yeah. that. I can uh, I can add on to that. One of the most interesting experiences I had was the CEO of this manufacturing business uh, was rolling out our product, and they were a high mix, low volume job shop making okay. hydraulic components. Now this company had been through you know a couple of you know org changes. They've gone through two different private equity firms, so you know that can be pretty yeah. intense for folks. And the CEO is just phenomenal, and he. Before deploying the system, he, because he really wanted to cut down the setup times and really understand, you know, when I walk around the shop floor, you know, why are people not enabled? And it was really refreshing to hear him say, bring in, you know, 10 operators that are the kind of the lead folks and basically say, I'm here in my office thinking I have the answers, but I'm actually an idiot. And I want Amper to show how I'm making bad decisions in the mm -hmm. business and surface the actual struggles that you go through on a day-to-day -day basis. So this isn't a tool to help me understand how you're doing, but it's actually a tool to show how I'm doing by not providing the right tools, the right training, by not having the right jobs for a shop floor, by uh, not having enough maintenance folks, by not having enough engineers. Uh, and so I thought that was a really great example of yeah. this is a way to surface issues and opportunities for enabling folks as opposed to, uh, you know, in a negative way, it's like, you know, being big brother. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so explain to us the, the culture at Amper itself, right? I mean, uh, startup culture uh, paired with manufacturing culture paired with, you know, software itself the those are three very distinct cultures um tell us about the culture there at at amper katrina why don't you yeah take a so i think it yeah. starts with again with its um so yeah you did mention startup i i do want to call something out so sometimes startups are i mean it ah, really <laughs> depends when you say a startup culture there are lots of things that come to mind. Absolutely. Um, and I've been a part of a number of those startup culture definitions where you can play ping pong, 
and you know you get all the prizes and everything's paid for you and here's the lunch all the time and like you know all those all those fun perks um i just don't believe perks are culture i agree hard with opinion. you on that one yeah yeah um and so i think so we are we're a dispersed workforce so we're remote um mm -hmm. and so part of um our culture is i think for from for me and my um point of view is um how we work together despite the distance um mm -hmm. i think that it's a really important um piece for us um and so a couple of ways you know we do that we have like a stand up meeting every morning um just to meet together and say hey like let's all get on the same page um what are you doing for today how was your yesterday um it, do we need any help um does anybody need anything um and so i think also communication is a big part of culture so being able to um if I have anybody has a question we can ask our product team or our support team and so again communication um, being part of uh, a healthy culture, making mm -hmm. sure that we can get the, the answers that we need as individual employees, making sure that we're bringing our best every day. So I think um, part of our culture is, yes, autonomy. Um, like I'm only one here in Kansas City. Um, sure, like autonomy, but also collaboration. Sure. Um, and so being able to make sure that all of the information that we're all talking about is also in one location. Um, and so we don't keep things in our brain, we being able to share. Um, and so even from sales to support to customer success, uh, we actually have a handoff from sales to customer success. And so being able to work with um, all of our different departments um, together and knowing that, that the, the vision is brought down by Akshat and we, um, as multiple teams get to work together to accomplish that. And so I think um, autonomy plus uh, communication um, yeah. from our end is it's clear that it's just very important for us to have a healthy culture um, at Amber for sure. Awesome. I'll add a few elements of that, which is yeah. some of our core values, hopefully kind of exemplify like our culture, um, you know, consistent with our product. We try to embrace reality. That's something that we say a lot. And so it's so easy, especially as a startup, trying to grow fast and, you know, make a mark in the world to, you kind of have to believe certain things to be true. Mm -hmm. And I think you need to have a big vision. You need to be ambitious. Uh, and I think that dream and vision without reality is just never going to get there. And I think sure. um, that's something that I really took took on like through some failures early on in the business where you're like kind of warping in reality. And so from a failure, one of the core values was embrace reality. And that's something that we try and keep saying a lot. Um, another one is uh, obsess over the customer success. Like we're very much geared around any kind of revenue is around capturing value, but you got to create value first. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, if we create a billion dollars of value for our customers, you know, we'll be a pretty successful business. So that's really yeah. where everything stems from. Sure. Um, and then finally is, you know, we have a large surface area. We actually design and manufacture our chips. We, uh, so we have an in-house manufacturing process. We have a shipping really? and receiving. Yep. We wow. uh, do machine learning. We do, uh, you know, uh, software development. We do, you know, sales and, and everything in between. So. Okay. The amount of skill sets that we need to function is quite vast. And so um, extreme ownership and, you know, a bias for action. Um, yeah. And Katrina certainly lives up, you know, just if you see a problem, go solve it. Don't make a committee to solve a problem. Like, yeah. you know, so uh, anyways, some of those no, themes. No meetings about meetings, um, that kind of stuff. Yeah, good. Uh, Aksha, how did, how did your, um, your past, right? You grew up in India. How did, how did that shape, uh, your journey with Amper and, uh, the culture that you've formed there? You know, it's such a different experience growing up in a developing country. And, um, you know, the, one of the things is, uh, another core value is being lean. I, I okay. think, um, if we're trying to give an affordable, accessible product to our customers, uh, being lean. And I think that's something that you just kind of have to 
do in India um, in many ways, like uh, the the whether it's the income levels, whether it's the pricing, like you, you basically need to live a pretty frugal and lean life in India, like, you know, just a developing country, like uh, there's certainly a lot of growth opportunities, but that's something that you're kind of raised with uh, being in India. Also, it, it helped that my dad was in auto component manufacturing, which is a very, very competitive business. So yeah. um, that's certainly added um, an aspect of it. You know, I would say India is a pretty entrepreneurial uh, country and it's kind of out of necessity. You don't have a ton of large corporations and like kind of the, the cushion uh, that you might have in, you know, a more developed country. And so uh, I think that that definitely normalized starting a company, um, which is also very normalized in the U.S., uh, of course. But um, yeah, I think it's, it's, I think those two elements, which is just entrepreneurship, put yourself out there and being lean. I think those two really stand out to me. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Um, <clears throat> Katrina, uh, tell us about some of the customers that you've worked with, right? And, and uh, you, you talked about how Amper can affect the culture within your, your customers, but have you had any, do you have any stories that stick out in your mind of, uh, you know, implementing Amper and it being just one of those aha moments for, for your customer? Yeah. So um, I'd say two customers come to mind. One, um, an injection molding um, for like solar components customer uh, working with the SVP you know, of operations there. Um, his, he, he really was looking at his teams as their operators were like the driver of a, of a, like a race car. And they were trying to get all of the resources that they could to their drivers to get and to get their machines up and running as, as fast as possible when they're down. Yeah. So how do we get resources to, um, the people that are actually making the parts for us. And so kind of flipping this idea, you know, of, you know, operators just make parts to actually operators do one of the most important things in, in our plant. And so um, awesome. hearing, you know, hearing that point of view um, from a leader really is, uh, I think, important to me and important to Amper as a business um, because, we actually have an, an operator input portion of our of our solution. Um, and so when anybody, you know, any leader ever tells me, hey, like I'm I'm valuing what our operators are bringing to the table um, culture wise, like I know that's a big win um, for a partnership with us. Um, and so mm -hmm. I, I do I just really like that um, kind of race car driver approach is everyone's going fast. Um, when something is down, we've got to, you know, get everybody there, um, get that machine back up and running. So that also, you know, that pit crew mentality means that we're focused and we're working hard at the task at hand. Right. Um, yeah. and so, um, that was something where we, we kind of took that as a team, um, with them and kind of use that as like how they're going to initially like adopt Amper as well. So like, which part of their pit crew needed to use which part of Amper um, and how they would actually do that. Um, and so we set their team up, you know, with their operators using the operator interface, with their team leads using a tablet to see all of their machines and where they're at and make sure they're checking on, you know, their operators when needed. And then all the way up to um, leadership where, you know, if a goal is saying, you know, I want, you know, all my downtime, you know, labeled by X month, you know, just to make sure we're tracking our, you know, OEE properly. It's like that, that vision and that view can be applied to um, our solution there. And mm -hmm. it goes, you know, all the way from um, somebody being at that machine all the way up to decision makers. And so I think that, that experience was really eye opening for me. And just hearing how um, he had that vision for um, his multiple plants and and us as well as I'd say the second um, is really you know like we had a, a stamping um, customer where you know he knows that they can be making more more parts faster, but unless he 
like he doesn't know what he doesn't know. And so mm. I would say that one, one thing during our proof of concept, I was like, I, I said, Hey, you know, we, this machine that we're looking at it, the utilization is like really low on this. Like, is that to be expected? Were you expecting? He was like, well, I was expecting it, but not really that low, but that just means I don't have the resources to then give my people what they need properly. And so he needs to have eyes on how much, you know, time his machines are running and aren't so that he can give his employees the work that they need, you know, to have um, in order for the business to function. So I think it really just, it really just depends on the use case and the scenario of the actual business yeah. where, and that's really, I think that's fun for me is really trying to find where we're going to impact a business um, and how we're going to do that and yeah. being flexible in that way. Um, I think it is, is that's the fun part for me. Yeah, I, I get that. Uh, and are you a race fan or was that an analogy that he used, your customer used? That was an analogy our customer used. And I have taken and ran with it, actually. No, I, I love use it, it I, all the time now. Yeah. I, I use uh, a similar analogy, right? So I talk about uh, it, when I talk with clients and, and guests on the show, um, when you look at Formula One, F1 racing has the fastest pit stop in all of racing it's a fat it's called the fastest two seconds in sports for a reason right mm -hmm. because you have individual contributors who all have their job that they have to execute flawlessly and not worry about the person next to them executing on their job right so i love that that owner that svp uh brought that up because that's the truest form of teamwork and and working together is being able to focus on just executing what your role is and trusting that the person next to you isn't going to drop the lug wrench or the the fuel canister or anything like that you know that that tire is going to be on when you have to put the wrench on mm -hmm. yeah so I love it. Uh, yeah, for sure. and, and you ran with it well. Are you a fan of F1? No, no. But we have a racetrack in Kansas City. I've ran it. Have you really? Like, I saw the, like, marathon type. Yeah, those. Oh, yeah. That's that's not anything that I experience in my world. Um, I'm sitting, but if I wasn't, I'm rounder in the middle than I it's should okay. be. You can start. You can start. You You can start. I started uh, from I started from somewhere and that was a nowhere place. Okay. It, yeah, I just started jogging. It was fine. It was I think I have a gym. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Listen, that's what everybody says. But let me remind you, I said I would never run, and that people who decide to pick their entire bodies up with their legs and move it forward, they're unicorns. That's why I cycle. <laughs> I want to okay. sit down on a bike. That was why I'm I said I didn't run. Yeah. See, you're a third of the way to a half Ironman. Yeah. I, so all I need is you to cycle and we find somebody <laughs> to run and then I'm a happy dude. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you're, that's also true. That's also I'll true. Do you can do a relay. Ironman. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll do a third true. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Teamwork. That's what, yeah. that's what we're all about here. Perfect. Teamwork. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're a big fan of lifelong learning. Katrina, right? I mean, that's one of the things that you talk about. And, mm -hmm. and so talk to us about how a, a the learning journey at your customers occurs mm. and Amper plays, and what role does Amper play in, in a part of that? Well, I can maybe start and feel free to jump in, Katrina. Yeah, yeah, do that. So the reality is everyone's on the journey, right? Um, and so many manufacturing companies, investing in technology is a strategy, but it's nearly impossible to define the end state for many reasons. One is technology is changing so fast. Sure. Uh, and the other is our, the market is changing so fast, like the macro world. And finally, our customers are on their own unique internal organizational development. So you've got three very dynamic vectors of the entire world shifting technology shifting and their company shifting. And so journey is definitely the right word. And so for a lot of our customers, they're 
they're so far along in the journey, whether it's in building technology infrastructure, whether it's in lean, uh, a lean mindset, whereas a lot of other folks have a vision and Amper is a vehicle for them to get there. And so what this looks like is on one end of the spectrum, your folks who are like, I literally don't know much about my shop floor until the next day. We still use clipboards, we have whiteboards, and we're just trying to figure out where to even get started. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we totally embrace that, that no, uh, that, you know, people are motivated enough to do something about it. And that, that's awesome. And so we actually have Six Sigma black belts and green belts on our team who on a monthly basis, initially on a weekly basis, connect with our customers and not, not only train them on the software, but also tell, educate them about, um, you know, concepts and lean and so on. So for wow. example, you talked about the changeover. It originates from SMED, right? Single minute mm -hmm. exchange of dyes. And so, uh, you know, our team, once customers sign up as, uh, with us, actually are uh, educated about all these different concepts and how our technology enables those concepts to come to life and be sustainable. Our customers, um, they're so far along and they literally just need us to help them get the technology in place and they kind of are off the races. Mm -hmm. um, so all of this to say, journey is definitely the right word and you've got all these moving pieces. Um, so I think just leaning into the fact that it's, it's a continuum, uh, yeah. I think, is a healthy mindset. I'd, I'd add that when we're talking about learning and culture, like if you don't have, like a, if you're not in a learning mindset um, as a leader anywhere, but even in manufacturing, like if you're not carrying yourself with a learning mindset and permeating that in your culture, um, I mean, I, that's just key. I yeah. would, I, I would challenge, and I'd say that's just a miss. Yeah. Um, like culture-wise, is if you're not continuously learning. Obviously, we have continuous improvement, so you know a lot of manufacturers do learn. But if you're not taking the stance of like, I learn every day, um, then I think I think that's a culture miss. And I think this podcast speaks to it as well in many ways. There's such an appetite to hear from other folks, and the world is changing so much. Like. Uh, we have customer webinars all the time where you know, we bring on like, you know, or roundtable discussions where we bring on six, seven different customers and they just connect with each other and share ideas. So wow. again, goes, goes to that's, that fact. That's neat. Uh, and, and I bring that up, guys. Um, one of the things that I see very commonly out there with manufacturers, mainly manufacturers on the small, maybe small to medium size, right? So not your large manufacturers, but your smaller ones that may just be on their pathway to performance reviews, or it may not be a regular thing that they do. Connecting performance with continuous learning is a tough thing for a lot of manufacturers who aren't used to providing those kinds of continuums to use your word, Akshat, right? So uh, is, is there a way that not only leadership, but also the employees within your customers are able to go down a continuum and, and like, could I go to uh, one of your customers and say, hey, uh, I noticed that George over here got a five on this part of his performance review that uh, Amper really helps with. Um, and I know Amper has a, a course on this that will take them from a three to a five, right? Is, the, is there that opportunity when your customers are interacting with Amper uh, to, to have that kind of use you guys as a resource as well? Yeah. So I think two things come to mind. Um, so in terms of making workforce development and coaching and training opportunities, while we don't provide a training matrix per se, sure. um, what is interesting with our tool is you can see based on real data on the same part number or on the same machine, if one operator was able to get you know, an amazing cycle time, amazing throughput, and maybe another ind individual wasn't able to. 
Mm -hmm. um, it surfaces those asymmetries and opportunities for coaching. And so uh, I think that's a big enabler in that, wow, like why is this person having a different process or a challenge? Uh, and so it's able to kind of easily surface that. Mm -hmm. Now, without automation and putting all this information in one place, you'd have to really rely on luck that you have someone walking by and you see someone struggling. And, you know, it's not the greatest thing to say, hey, my, raising your hand up, being like, I'm struggling. Because right. everyone has challenges in the shop floor. So I think that's one great example. And the second is, you know, we're motivated for, you know, our customers uh, to do right by our customers, but also for ourselves, for folks to adopt the technology as much as possible, right? So yeah. we're, we're uh, definitely motivating folks in being able to adopt it better by connecting them to other customers, by going on site and training them on how to use these concepts through our technology. So um, I guess those two patterns really stand out to me. Yeah. Anything to add, Katrina? Yeah, I'd say, you know, even with um, maybe in relation to like the labor shortage, really mm -hmm. understanding like where, you know, your operators need help or more training so that you can train them. Um, because I just, I'm of the belief that, you know, I, I think everybody's working to do their best. Yeah. And so it's like, how do you, how do you put, you know, your people in place to do that? Um, it's really hard to do that without knowing, you know, how your employees are performing. And so, um, yeah, I think that is an addition um, awesome. to what Ava would bring. I, I love it. I love it. So Akshat, to you, what does the future of manufacturing look like? Yeah. You know, when I hear that question, I think about Jeff Bezos' point of view on how uh, Amazon has evolved, which is people will always want more choice and want it cheaper and faster. Yep. So what are those things that will hold true 10 years from now, 20 years from now? And I think that will define uh, a lot of manufacturing. So what's going to probably hold true 20 years from now? Um, market's going to get more competitive. So the future of manufacturing is more efficient so that you can keep up with costs. Um, the length of the supply chain is going to get shorter because all of us want more choice. All of us want two-day, now same-day delivery. Right. And so I, I think a lot of those themes uh, around Amazon, which is cheaper, faster, more choice, have a long shadow into the future of manufacturing. And so every person will be a superhuman. I mean, if you look at a person working in a manufacturing building 20 years from now or 30 years from now, they will look literally like Iron Man <laughs> and uh, running the shop floor, right? Okay. So, um, I like it. it. It means they'll have superhuman powers in terms of information, in terms of being able to make change. Um, so that obviously means everything's connected, literally no slip of paper on the entire shop floor, um, no low-skilled activities. I think there'll be so much automation as chips get cheaper and automation is more widespread. Cutting out middlemen in the process is another big thing with technology, right? Like, I, I, I can see a world where the end, end customer feels more visceral. So many times on a shop floor, it's like, wait, where does this go? Where, where does this component go? And it's so abstracted with layers. But in the future, with just more visibility in the supply chain, with more connectivity, uh, I think folks will feel much closer and mm -hmm. be able to impact the end customers uh, more directly. Got so it. I can dive in a bit more in my point of view, but. Uh, no, I love that. That's yeah. great. Thank you. Um, Katrina, last question that, well, second to last question for you. Um, employee engagement and company culture are such an entwined uh, are such entwined concepts, right? Uh, and and with healthy culture, you get more engaged employees, which in turn gives you more discretionary effort out of your uh, workforce, right? So talk to us about the engagement aspects of Amper itself and, and how that plays a role in, in the company culture at, at your clients and customers. Sure. Yeah. So when, again, talking about um, making sure we're engaging all of our like individual contributors, right? So um, from our operator interface, 
So now when using Amper, um, now essentially multiple departments are engaged, right, at the right time to do the right thing. Um, and so when we're talking about it in engagement, yeah, sure. Um, I know that, you know, we'll use, you know, we'll walk around the shop and try and find somebody if our machine's down, or maybe we have like an and on light, um, right. or we do like a call, you know, over the speaker. Um, but it, it's not just um, employee engagement in general. It's also the speed to which you can engage, right? Yeah. And so being able to, at the operator interface, say, hey, I'm going to call um, maintenance and I need them here now. And being able to say, hey, um, I'm on the maintenance team. I immediately saw the message. I'm going to accept this call. I'm going to go right to this machine. And so, yes, employee engagement, but also employee engagement plus response time is sure. going to be very key. Can you hear my dog? Okay, good. That's why I paused and had a second. Okay. He's growling out the window. I can hear him. So I just wanted to pause and have that not be on the podcast. Okay, cool. No, Give me a good. sec. So yeah, so time to response for employee engagement is going to be very important um, yeah. uh, for decision-making decision purposes, right? And so um, why do we want engaged employees? Well, we want to make better decisions. Well, right. the only way we're going to make better decision is engaged employees and time to understand you know, what an employee needs and when, and who gets to respond as quickly as possible to that um, yeah. ask is really important for employee engagement. And I think that's where um, our customers are really seeing, hey, where are our gaps in employee engagement? Like yeah. they're now able to see, you know, okay, you know, raw material, or like maybe we need to add another role in raw material. Maybe we need to justify someone else on that team so that again back to the pit crew we have enough people to um, respond to um, the operator who needs some help at, at that machine or needs raw material in two hours right yeah. so that so that employee engagement is an employee now saying I need this at about this time I need I need this department to engage with me um, and so not only is it individual, like an individual choice to engage, but it's also how do you engage your workforce sure. together? Um, and so I think that's a, an interesting aspect for, for our solution is engaging the workforce together um, okay. for better results. Um, and so, yeah, I think it all starts with employees getting what they need to like do it. their role better. And when that happens, your employees are, are highly engaged for sure. I like it. Um, I and last question about the product, and then I've got my final question that I'll ask you both. Is there a feedback mechanism that Amper can be used as far as, so when I'm in small those small to medium sized shops, right? Uh, whether it's metal manufacturing, textile, food, whatever it may be, one of the biggest things that's lacking is feedback mechanisms from the shop floor up to middle and then top level leadership is, Amper designed or can it be used in a, as a feedback mechanism from the shop floor uh, employee up to, to leadership? Yes. And I have a couple of questions around that. So when we say like, so when we say feedback mechanism, are you saying like feedback loop, like from like an operator to a leader and then from the leader back to the operator? Like, is that what we're? Yes. I know you I, left it loose. I, I did on purpose, right? Um, yep. So uh, when 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 I think of feedback mechanisms, uh, you know, you've got different tools. You can there are focus groups, there are one on ones, there are surveys, there are suggestion mm. drop boxes, right? Things of that nature um, yep. that that employees can then start the feedback to management. Mm -hmm. And whether that management then loops back is usually determined by whether it's a healthy culture or not, right? Sure. If it just dangles in, in the ether after that feedback's given, yep. uh, that loop, that closing of the loop is an important part, That, but that's individualized by by leader, right? So yep, for sure. that, that's where my question stems from is more of, is it, can it be used as that feedback mechanism to provide mm -hmm. feedback from the floor to management? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say there are a few ways uh, that can happen. So, you know, we all know morning, you know, morning meetings occur to review the previous day or, you know, beginning of shift meetings occur if you're doing a gimbal walk, whatnot. Um, And so um, being able to deliver a report automatically to that team lead um, responsible for running that next shift meeting or the morning meeting, hey, this is what happened yesterday um, and facilitating that conversation and that feedback um, at every shift or every morning um, is going to be, yeah, I think it's pretty important for the culture, right? Culture yeah. feedback is, okay, now we're able to not guess at what happened or, you know, not know what happened, but this is what happened yesterday. Um, how did that impact you? How did that impact everybody in, in that circle? And yeah. what do you think about like how we performed yesterday and what we can do better? Um, and so, yeah, I think um, there's, Amper is definitely facilitating those conversations uh, within our customer base um, in either daily or, or weekly, monthly meetings, for sure. I love it. Akshay, anything you want to add to that? Yeah. Um, when you think about you know, lost time or lost capacity, um, a lot of the reasons is because of you, don't have the right, uh, you don't have the people on the shop floor or you don't have the demand. And mm-hmm. so what some of our more forward-thinking customers do is instead of having the downtime reason be unscheduled or uh, whatever, they actually have a reason that we don't have a setup machinist. We don't have a trained uh, person for, for this job. And so being able, or we don't have the demand for this machine. Yeah. And so flipping it from being like, oh, why was this machine down because of the operator's fault to making it a scorecard that only HR or sales or the executives in the business can affect. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's a great way to surface accountability both ways. Um, but coming down to performance, um, performance management, coaching, whatever you want to call it, you know, today uh, operators are tra- challenged to run multiple machines at the same time. And whether it's a Swiss machine, whether it's an injection molding machine, like you typically are expected to do more than just one machine at a time, run yeah. one machine at a time. And so I think what's uh, great with Amper is that it actually gives a voice to operators who are able to do that and a path to, to running multiple machines. So we're able to, number one, show when someone is able to effectively run multiple machines at the same time mm-hmm. through our data collection. And number two, uh, for that individual, um, we're able to give them visibility that, oh my gosh, I'm running lights out and this bar feeder got jammed and I didn't know about it. So we're able to, uh, you know, increase the output and productivity through these tools. Got it. I like it. Um, so last question. It's the same question I ask all my guests. What didn't I ask you that you want to share with the audience? I can jump in uh, to start. Well, if you think. So... What's new at Amper? Uh, you know, I, and I think okay. in many ways, Amper is going through quite a reinvention. You know, every couple of years, you need to reinvent your business. We're going through that right now. Okay. Um, Amper started as a machine monitoring product. That is kind of our origin, automate machine data collection. Yeah. And learning from our customers and just even, frankly, educating ourselves further and further and gravitating to the biggest problems in the shop floor were evolving into what we're calling a factory OS. And okay. it's a registered trademark, so Amper's only factory OS. And essentially, uh, while we still will keep automating the data collection of machine data, we're combining that with a lot of vital context, whether it's your routings, whether it's your workforce data, whether it's you know further signals from the shop floor. Mm-hmm. So um, that's a big transformation in the business and we're super excited about it. But um, the way we looked at it is that simply focusing on making machines run better, you might actually end up with suboptimal results. You might take on jobs that don't make you much money. You might take mm-hmm. on, uh, you might have a horrible quality of life for your operators. So mm-hmm. uh, in terms of not just improving machine productivity, but really making sure every stakeholder from your customers to your employees, to your machine, like 
to the business, like everyone is really successful. That's the new change at Amper. And uh, it's a totally new product and excited to go into 2024 with this. When, when is that being released? So uh, on February 1st, we have our webinar where we un- unveil it. So by the time this podcast is live, I'm sure uh, it'll be out in the world, but it will uh, be out in the world by the time this one is released. So um, everybody go check out Amper's new uh, platform. Katrina, what haven't I asked you? So I'll, um, I'll still, I'll partner with the, the topic of, of culture in general. Um, I would say one of, one of my favorite quotes, uh, and I think this applies just in general to, to manufacturing um, and systems. And so um, goals are for people who care about winning once. Systems are for people who care about winning repeatedly. Mm. Um, and so, you know, I, what systems are, I would challenge, you know, manufacturers, anybody that, that's listening to this podcast, like, what systems are you actually focused on uh, improving? And if you're not, I would challenge you to do so. If you mm-hmm. want to create a winning culture, if you want to create a winning business, um, focusing on your systems is is the way to do that. Um, that's something you know. It's it's. I say that because it it is a, um, a oh, post-it note. You. It is one of like my it. favorite quote. When I say it's one of my favorite quotes, it's a post-it note on my desk. Um, and so, yeah, I think I just uh, every listener that's listening to this episode, thanks for. Um, continuing to listen. And I just challenge you with what are your systems today? What do they look like? Um, and are you operating in systems that, that are going to make you successful and winning repeatedly? Or are you just focused on one thing and you're only going to win once? So, yeah. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. I might use that as a clip of the episode. Thank you, Katrina. Um, Katrina, Oxshot, thank you guys so much for being on today. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Great episode, great conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap on today's episode of the Manufacturing Culture Podcast. We've journeyed through the ins and outs of company culture in the manufacturing industry, gaining amazingly invaluable insights from our guests, Aksha and Katrina. From discussing the evolution of company culture to exploring innovative strategies for employee engagement feedback at the end there, this episode has been truly a deep dive into the heartbeat of the manufacturing world. Folks, don't forget, you can always continue this journey with us by visiting manufacturingculturepodcast.com. Check out the information in the show notes. I'll have a link to uh, Amper and links to both Aksha and Katrina's LinkedIn profiles. On our website, you can dive into the archives, check out past episodes, look at show notes, buy merch, and please buy merch because I've got all these shirts sitting around. Buy some merch. Um, buy the merch. Buy the merch. Buy the merch. Uh, buy the merch. I, oh, there's a dog. A huge shout out to our sponsor, Spirodi, for their unwavering support. Their commitment to precision and innovation is what keeps this industry moving forward. And also, let's not forget our new partner, Shop Floor Coffee. As a listener of the Manufacturing Culture Podcast, you get an exclusive treat, which is 10% off when you use the the promo code skill up arizona uh it's a perfect brew to keep you energized and ready to take tackle any challenge on the shop floor i'd love for you guys to share this episode with your friends colleagues grandma kids spouse significant other whatever uh about uh the whether they're passionate about manufacturing or culture or neither or both, uh, the more you spread the word, the more we are found and people get involved in these conversations. Also, if you've enjoyed this episode, please rate and review on whatever platform you're watching or listening to this on. Uh, That rockets us up the charts so more people find us, um, which means that I bring you more content. Uh, So, folks, Stay inspired, keep challenging the norms, and let's continue to revolutionize the world of manufacturing together. Until next time, thank you for listening. Have a great day and keep making things.